and I'm awesome. And welcome to Davey's Awesome Wrestling, where I review wrestling related things all from the perspective of a fan, not an insider. And this past 4th of July weekend was WWE Money in the Bank 2022. Because nothing says 4th of July like Las Vegas and ladder matches. I'm not sure if that's a joke. So let's get into Money in the Bank 2022. The opener was the women's Money in the Bank match, with the contestants being Becky Lynch, Asuka, Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, Lacey Evans, Shotzi, and Alexa Bliss. A great match, of course. I mean, it's Money in the Bank. Only way to mess it up is by having a bad winner. We'll get to that later. Some definite nasty bumps in this one, the nastiest being Shotzi, who while attempting to do her senton dive onto an opponent laid out over a ladder, the opponent missed, and apparently she was supposed to hit her back on the ladder, but clearly saw she smacked the back of her head on the edge of the ladder. And then later, you could see she had blood in her scalp. Glad she was okay, but... Dude. But then Becky Lynch doing a senton outside onto Asuka over a bridge to ladder. But in the end, it was Liv Morgan who was able to prevail, being the Money in the Bank winner. And me, I'll easily give this one a 5 out of 5. Yeah! Then for the United States title, Theory puts his title on the line against Bobby Lashley. Theory came out first, which I'm gonna admit, I'm not a fan of that. I'm old school, the champ comes out last. It was decent. You know, Theory put up a fight against Bobby Lashley, an okay one, but I don't think any of us believed for one second that Theory was gonna win against Lashley. At the very most, I think we thought maybe he'd keep his title by getting himself disqualified, hitting Lashley with a chair or something, but no, not to be the case. Lashley was able to get him in the hurt lock and get him to tap out making Lashley once again the United States Champion, which is kind of a step down for him. Like, especially right now, they're talking about Roman Reigns doesn't have any new opponents. He's never faced Bobby Lashley. And even though I'm not the hugest Bobby Lashley fan, I would like to see that match. Definitely would like to see that match more than I would like to see Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns again. But back to this match, like I said, it was okay. So, three out of five. Yeah! Then for the Raw Women's Championship, Carmella... Challenge champion, Bianca Belair. Originally it was supposed to be Rhea Ripley, but during the number one contenders match where she got the title shot, she ended up suffering a brain injury. Hopefully she'll be back soon. It was okay. Wasn't much to it. And I don't think anybody expected Carmella to win. Now that's not me knocking her talent, because I'm not one of these people who gets on this bandwagon of, oh, she's just a pretty face. No, I've talked about it before. She is a much better worker than people give her credit for. She really is. But, as the pattern we've learned with Carmella and WWE, if they put her in the championship match, she's kind of become just that feeder opponent that they throw in there. And that's honestly sad in my opinion. However, even I can concede that it's not time for Bianca Belair to drop the title. Which she didn't. She got the KOD on Carmella and the win. And I would give this match a 3 out of 5. Yeah! And then after the match, Carmella beat her up. So, maybe they'll have another match. Then for the Tag Team Championships... Champions, the Usos, defended against the Street Profits. And here's the thing, what kind of took away from this is, again, us knowing the Usos are going to win because a couple of times on SmackDown and a couple of times during this match, the commentators had to bring up the rumors that the Street Profits are not getting along backstage. That's not very subtle. You're basically telling us, hey, the Street Profits are going to break up soon. Which I'm not saying I'm against, because I've said it before, I think Montez Ford would be a great singles wrestler. But when you keep mentioning it, you're kind of letting us know, yeah, they're not going to win because we're going to split them up. It was a great match, though. A ton of back and forth, a ton of drama, as we would expect in a match between the Street Profits and the Usos. But again, the constant mentioning of, oh, they're having problems backstage, just kind of spoiled it for us of who was going to win, which turned out to be true. The Usos retained. Again, the constant not-subtle hints kind of took a point away, but I would still give this a good solid... Four out of five. Yay! But then we're obviously building up to a rematch because they showed in the replay that Montez Ford's shoulder was not on the mat when he was pinned. So, there's a little controversy there. And then for the SmackDown Women's Championship, Natalia challenged champion Ronda Rousey. I mean, it was a good match between two submission masters, so I can't take away from that. During the match, Ronda Rousey's knee got injured, but she was still able to prevail and get Natalia to tap out, retaining her title. Really, my only gripe is that I kind of expected a little bit more from these two, but I'll still give it a good solid 3 out of 5. Yeah! What was most exciting was after the match. Seeing that Rousey's knee was injured, Liv Morgan decided to cash in her money in the bank now. 
And it looked like Liv was going to be the first woman to not successfully cash in the money in the bank as Ronda Rousey quickly got her into a submission hold. But Liv was able to get out and reverse it into a roll-up and get the pin and finally become a champion, the SmackDown Women's Champion. And we saw that there were no hard feelings on the part of Ronda Rousey, who congratulated her and presented her with the belt. So, can't really grade that match because it wasn't much of one, but it was still really cool. Then the main event, the men's Money in the Bank match. Even though the main event should be the Universal Championship that hasn't been defended in three pay-per-views. In fact, since WrestleMania, it's only been defended once on SmackDown. Participants in this one, Riddle, Seth Rollins, Omos, Madcap Moss, Sami Zayn, Sheamus, and Drew McIntyre. However, before the match started, Adam Pearce came out and announced that there was going to be one more entrant. So the last minute surprise entrant, Theory. Which they never said, but we kind of figured because he's Vince McMahon's protege, although Vince McMahon has stepped back, so it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense because Theory lost earlier. But you know what? Wouldn't be the first time there was a surprise entrance that made no sense. The match was good, of course. There was a couple of big moments, like when Riddle did his floating bro from the top of the ladder, or when six out of the other seven picked up almost and threw him through a table. But what kind of killed the match that everybody's been complaining about was the winner, being Theory. It did kind of kill it a little bit. I gotta say, that wasn't the way I think they should have gone, and I'll get a little bit more into that in a little bit. But for now, this match overall... Could have been a 5, except with that win, it kind of knocked it all the way down to a 3 out of 5. Yeah! So, Money in the Bank 2022 overall was okay. It wasn't great. It wasn't fantastic. It had a 5 and a 4, and then a few 3s. Which is sad, because Money in the Bank is one of my favorite pay-per-views. However, what hurt Money in the Bank this year was a couple of things. Number one, it's really bothering me how many pay-per-views are not having championship matches. I get that Roman Reigns is on a lighter schedule, but if you're going to do that, then he shouldn't be the champion. In my opinion, the champion should defend his title at least every pay-per-view. Or if he skips one pay-per-view here and there, that should be a big deal. But to sit here and have him not defend his title at any pay-per-view since WrestleMania, that's terrible. Yes, he's going to defend it at SummerSlam, but he's going to defend it against an opponent that we are so sick of watching him fight. Yes, I understand that there are some opponents that fight more than that and we don't get sick of it, but that's because those opponents are actually still entertaining us. Like, I would be just fine seeing another Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins match, especially if it was for a title. Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, on the other hand, we were done with it the first time we saw it. Maybe second, okay, but, but they keep pushing it like it's the biggest thing in the world. Even called the last one the biggest match in WrestleMania history. Which I can't say without rolling my eyes. So that should have been it. But no, we're going to have another one. And he's not going to wrestle again until we have that one. And really don't care which one wins because either way it's going to be a part-timer as the champion. Roman Reigns is going to be a part-timer, then it's time to take the belt off of him. And a perfect way to do that would have been through the money in the bank. But now the winner was Theory. And again, yes, the internet has been complaining and complaining complaining and complaining about it. I'm not complaining for the same reasons. I like Theory. I've liked Theory ever since I saw him in Evolve. In Evolve Wrestling, I remember seeing him and going, this guy is going to be a big star. And I still think he's going to be, if they do this right. There are two ways to salvage him being the Money in the Bank winner. Number one, obviously, somebody more credible challenges him for that briefcase and wins. Kind of like they did a couple years ago with Otis. That was the worst choice to give the Money in the Bank to at the time. He wasn't ready for it. None of us would buy him in the main event. So get the briefcase off of him. The other way is to not have him cash in his Money in the Bank at SummerSlam because it is too soon. And cashing in a Money in the Bank or even just winning a world championship too soon is not good for a wrestler either. That can kill a career to have a lackluster title run because you just weren't ready for it. I.e. Jack Swagger. Or even Jinder Mahal. Both of them won the title before anybody could really believe them as being credible main event champions. So because of this, they couldn't legitimately win a single championship match without either cheating or getting help. And that hurts. Also because of this, both of them, because of the fact that they weren't ready for it and we weren't really buying it, were mid-card world champions. That really hurts. It was the wrong way to go with those, and it hurt their careers so badly. So to give Theory the championship now would really hurt him. It's also not good for them to cash in the money in the bank and lose. 
The only person that was okay for that was John Cena because he was so over him losing after cashing in the Money in the Bank wasn't going to hurt him. But Damian Sandow, it hurt him. Baron Corbin, it hurt him. And, and yes, he's been building himself back up as Happy Corbin, but still, it killed a lot of momentum. So if they're not going to take it off of him, then instead of having him cash it in at SummerSlam, have him wait about a year, build him up so that he can be credible, and then have him cash it in. Either way, this was the wrong choice. To give it to Riddle would have been fine because he's the up-and-comer. We're seeing him as a main event. I don't like it, but I can't deny that he's connecting with the audience. Drew McIntyre would have been fine. Sheamus would have been okay. Both of them haven't been champion in a while and should be. Sami Zayn, a guy who's been tiptoeing between being mid-carter and main event for quite a long time now, would have been just fine. My pick would have been Seth Rollins. Yes, it was predictable, but it would have been good to have him win Money in the Bank, cash in at SummerSlam, recreating his WrestleMania moment, and then hold on to it until WrestleMania, have Cody Rhodes come back, win the Royal Rumble, basically the Triple H treatment, and have them main event next year's WrestleMania. That would have been fantastic. That would have been good. That is the one thing that could make Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins even bigger than it's been. But alas, they're not going that route. It's going to be Theory, who more than likely is going to cash it in and lose. And Roman Reigns is going to keep the title for a while. If he loses it, he's going to get it right back. And we're probably going to have yet another WrestleMania main event of Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. So because of all this, I feel like I could barely but give Money in the Bank a 3 out of 5. Yeah! So there you have it. That's my wrestling review this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit like. Hit subscribe, hit that little bell so you get notifications for when I post new videos, and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of Money in the Bank 2022. Tell me your thoughts on going forward after Money in the Bank. Love you guys.